Welcome everyone, we're about to get started with the OpenStack Elimination Game, also known as Are You Smarter Than a Foundation Board Member? My name is David Fishman, I'm the marketing guy at Marantis, and today our special guests are Boris Rensky, member of the foundation, Mark Collier, also member of the foundation, and Randy Bias, who's also a member of the foundation. Today's game is played for skill and <clears throat> to detect whether or not you know whether someone is bullshitting you about OpenStack. Winners of today's game, and there will be four of them, unless I find the other Samsung, in which case there'll be five, will win a fabulous Samsung Galaxy Tab 3, courtesy of Mirantis Cloud Scaling and the OpenStack Foundation. Here's how the game works. Each of you, when you walk in, should receive a game card. The game card looks like this. It has three numbers on it. The number one, the number two, and the number three. We will proceed through a series of carefully selected questions that have been sequenced in random order. Our panelists have not had the opportunity to prepare. This will totally be a test of their wits. Each question will have one panelist with the correct answer. The other two panelists will make up an answer. Your job, in order to win, is to pick which panelist has the right answer. Can I have my capable assistants in the room, please? Tomek, Christian, Ricardo, Shari? Uh, into the room, please. Everyone, hold up your game card. Hold up your game card with number two. That's the correct, that's not the correct answer, you all lose. If you're holding up the game, the card, and I ask who thinks it's number two, and that's not the correct answer, you will have to forfeit your game card and you are eliminated. If on the other hand you have the correct answer, you get to keep your game card and play on through to the next questions. Our contestants, our panelists, Boris Rensky, will be answer number one. If you think Boris has given the right answer, you'll raise your game card with number one. Number two, Mark Collier, if you think Mark has given the right answer, raise the game card for number two. And if you think Randy has given the right answer, in my experience, Randy always thinks he's given the right answer, you will select number three. So let's, I'm one. <laughs> let's pick an example. Here's the first question. Most of these questions we'll post on here, but this is something that we'll just do verbally. Here is a question. What are the names of the OpenStack releases to date? In alphabetical order. Boris? Uh, it's hard to say, but uh, hey, it says something right here. By the way, I should use a microphone. So let me try this one. I think it's Austin, um, Boston, Cactus, Diablo, Essex, Folsom, Grizzly, and Havana. Randy. A nice house. Uh, Mark. Mark, you're next. What is the sequence of the OpenStack releases to date in alphabetical order? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with uh, Austin, Bexar, Cactus, Diablo, Essex, Folsom, Grizzly, Havana, and Ice House. All right, Randy, what are the names of the OpenStack releases to date in alphabetical order? Now, everybody raise your card and hold the number up of the, of the panelist you think gave the correct answer. If you think Boris gave the correct answer, hold up number one. If you think Mark gave the correct answer, hold up number two. And if you think Randy gave the correct answer, hold up number three. No cheating. No cheating once your card is up. Now my assistants will be in the aisles ready to snatch your card for future questions if you got it wrong. So if you thought the correct answer was number one, Boris, you'd be out of the game. If you thought the correct answer was number three, Randy, you'd be out of the game because the correct answer is Austin, Bexar, Cactus, Diablo, Essex, Folsom, Grizzly, Havana, and Ice House, and that's why they put Mark in charge of the foundation. It's actually pronounced bear, so that was trying to trick you there a little bit. Yeah, I, I learn something new every day. 
All right, and now Thank you. the game begins. Here's the first question. What are tiered zones? Boris. Um, basically, uh, it means that your storage zones are as unique as possible. And it means that uh, if you're running on a single machine uh, and you try to put them on different disks in that same machine, um, if you're in a small cluster, you can try to put them on different hosts. And if you're in a big cluster, it'll try to put them on different racks. But basically, Swift will try to do just whatever environment you're in. Mark, what are tiered zones? I'm glad you asked. Tiered zones are actually the ability to have your OpenStack compute in different availability zones. So in different regions, you can have failover between your OpenStack compute um, clouds. Randy, what are tiered zones? Tiered zones are when you use cells in Nova to basically have one availability zone or one version, one node instance manage a whole bunch of other node instances as one of their availability zones. All right, you've heard the answers. Number one, Boris. Number two, Mark. And number three, Randy. Hold up your cards with the number of the panelist you think gave the correct answer. Assistants, would you come through the audience? All right. Everybody who's holding up, card number three, you lose. No, keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Be honest. Domic, number three, take their cards away. But we have multiple prizes, so don't go away. Yeah, don't there's go many away. rounds. We expect this is going to happen. Yeah, no, no. There'll be a winner, and then we'll go right back to the beginning. Number three. Very good. Number three. See, now you know how Randy got to be where he is today. Here's the next question. The correct answer is yeah. Boris, tiered zones are basically that Swift. <laughs> yeah, the number two's got it wrong. The correct answer is Boris. Number one. Who has number one? So we have a winner. We have, have a, a winner, winner already. <laughs> Stand up. Woo. You. Come on down. Sir. Come on down. You're the next All contestant right. on the elimination game. Congratulations. You are? Anand. Anand from Symantec. His office happens to be down the street from mine, but that's just a coincidence. All right, let's. Uh, Anand, show everybody what you won. Anand won a Galaxy 3 tablet, 7 inch. All right. All right, assistants, if you'd be so kind as to redistribute the game card so that everybody has one. How about we, uh, instead of uh, taking cards away and giving them back, we just kind of trust people to, to not raise them anymore if they lost. Oh, we could do that. That might, might simplify the logistics a bit. I like that. Let's do that. Yeah, we we'll just, we'll right. just trust so if you guys. If you got it wrong, you're going to have to put your card down. And I mean, when, when it starts... Except when it start for Anand. He already has a phone. Vote two. All right. Who doesn't have a card? We're ready. The next question, which has been selected at random, is question number 12. What are network namespaces used for in the neutron quantum L3 agent? Boris. Wait a second. I don't see this question here. Number 12. Oh, number 12. Yeah, they're okay. in order, Boris. OK. I need, I need to look here to figure out if I need to lie or say the truth, because of course I know the answer. You know. <laughs> so repeat. What are the network namespaces used for in the neutron quantum L3 agent? Um, they are basically used to uh, um, isolate tenants um, in the, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, preclude the uh, uh, network traffic from uh, traveling between the different tenants. Mark, what are network namespaces used for in the neutron quantum L3 agent? Uh, yeah, they're used uh, to allow you to have um, overlapping IPs. That's the, the main feature. Randy, what are network namespaces used for it by the neutron, neutron quantum L3 agent? The network namespaces in neutron are connected to the network namespace capability on the external that allows you to have virtual routing tables for each of the VMs that run on the All right, very good. Consider your answers carefully. 
If you think Boris gave the right answer, hold up number one. If you think Mark gave the right answer, hold up number two. And if you think Randy gave the right answer, hold up number three. All right, if you're holding up number three, you lose. Put the card under your chair. If you are holding up card number two, you win, you can continue to play. Everybody else put the card under the chair. Number two is in. All right, here's the next question. Question number three. Controversial. Controversial. I happen to know the correct answer because I wrote the questions. <laughs> number three. What is the status of API v3 in Keystone? You know what? We'll start with Randy this time. Randy will give answer number three. Mark, answer number two. Boris, answer number one. Randy, what is the status of API v3 in Keystone? It's broken. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're close, but uh, it actually is a trick question. It wasn't included in Havana. It was actually uh, not ready, so they had to move it to ice house. Of course. Um, Q3. It's, All right, it's, question number it's three. actually supported, but uh, it's supported by Keystone only, and that's not supported by other services. All right, so the remaining contestants. If you think Randy gave the correct answer, hold up number three. If you think Mark gave the correct answer, hold up number two. And if you think Boris gave the correct answer, hold up number one. All right, if you said number three, put the card under your chair, you're out. If you said number two, you're out. Number one, who's got number one still left? Excellent. Okay, we're narrowing it down. Nice work. Oh, this one's too hard, let's, let's find a good one. Oh, here's one. Question number 44. Jeez. <laughs> How often? Do we have these design summits? Boris. Um, it started out at first uh, with uh, four times a year. And uh, then at, uh, um, I think uh, already at Bear, it uh, switched to uh, uh, twice a year. Mark. <laughs> they kind of all run together, I know. Let's. Interesting. Um, what's a design summit? Oh, uh, we have them every six months or so. All right, Randy, how often do we have a design summit? Too often. <laughs> All right, how many people think Randy gave the correct answer? Hold up number three. Mark gave the correct answer. Hold up number two. Boris gave the correct answer. Hold up number one. Ooh. Actually, Mark's was the correct answer every six months. So. If you've got number, if you've got number, uh, Boris two. was actually right. Also. Oh, Boris was right. We were both right. He, yeah. he was telling oh. us history. <laughs> oh, good. So we'll, all of you get to keep your cards to play the okay, next round. He, he kind of threw me off there because he accidentally told the truth. <laughs> yeah, that happens sometimes. All right. Question number forty-one: How long does a PTL serve before they have to be re-elected? Until they die. Mark. Uh, I'm going to say one development cycle. All right. Randy? Up until the peasants show up at the gates with pitchforks and flaming torches to uh, take them out back. Ooh, the suspense. The suspense. How many people think Randy gave the right answer? Hold up three. Boris number one and Mark number two. Did we get an answer from Boris? Save it again. Did we get an answer from you? Yeah. I said until they die. Oh, for life. For life. Okay. <laughs> If you held up number one, you're out. Good. Nobody, nobody said number nobody three. Held. Randy, you're losing your touch, dude. Get me back to the hard questions where I can uh, make All some right. bullshit. All right. Question number 11. How does the failure of no scheduler prevent users from creating a snapshot from virtual machine? Boris, Wait number a 11. Let me, let me identify this question here. How does the failure of Nova Scheduler prevent users from creating snapshot from virtual machine? Um, if it fails, you can take a snapshot. Mark. So once the scheduler's offline, there's no way to actually communicate with the guests or the uh, host hypervisors and actually provision uh, a new 
New virtual yes. machine. All right, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> It's a trick question. It's a uh, trick excellent. question. It doesn't because the uh, scheduler is out of band for snapshot operations, which happen via Cinder. Out of band, huh? That's All right, good. good. If out you think band. Randy is correct, hold up o number three. If you think Mark is correct, hold up number two. And if you think Boris is correct, hold up number one. All right. Our panelists are losing their touch. We, we have no one eliminated this round. All right, yeah, we're question get, number we're get a trick here now. All right. Question number 19, we'll start with Randy. What is the purpose of the metadata service in OpenStack? Randy? Uh, the metadata service is used by uh, Nova when a VM uh, instance spin up request comes in through the API to basically determine where that VM is placed in the cluster. Mark? Wrong. The metadata service actually keeps track of the tenant activity so that you can report back for showback and uh, for billing. Boris? Um, it's actually used by Nova API to uh, retrieve services information. So, for example, retrieve uh, IP address. All right. If you think Boris gave the right answer, number one, Mark number two, and Randy number three. All right. Who said number three? You're out. Who said number two? You're out. Boris? Sorry, Sean. Yeah, Sean, you've been out already a couple of rounds. I see you keep <laughs> putting your card out. Just, just. We, we have more, more prizes, so don't worry about it. You still get your chance. Question number 37. If anybody drops out of this, you have not been paying attention. What did Neutron used to be called? Whoa, that's a hard one. Randy, what did Neutron used to be called? Um, quantum, and people still call it quantum quite a bit. Mark, what did Neutron used to be called? Netron. Boris? Used, used to be called cloud scaling. <laughs> All right, who thinks it's number, okay, though, that, that ring around worked just fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nobody has been eliminated. I, I think that we have this, smart people left only, so you should bust hard questions. Yeah, let's ask uh, a harder question. Or it might last a long time. All right, Bring question number left. 18, what? Is the difference between pause, unpause, and suspend, resume? Um, question number 18. Let me see this. Uh, Mark, actually, let's, let's mix it up here. Mark, and then Randy, and then, and then Boris. Sure. So uh, this is another trick question. There's actually no difference. They're synonyms. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So the, the difference is that pause, it pauses, and unpause, it unpauses. <laughs> and oh, su suspend, it suspends. <laughs> Randy, number 18. <laughs> you are fucking this shit up, man. <laughs> Randy, what's number 18? What's the difference between pause, unpause, and suspend, resume? Just, just, uh, pause and unpause <laughs> stores the VM in RAM, and suspend and whatever the other one was, resume, stores it on disk. All right. Like hibernate versus sleep. If you think Randy is correct, put up number three. Boris, you <laughs> think Boris knows what the hell he's talking about? Hold up number one. Mark, all right. You know, you guys are not making this easy. You know, people want to win the prizes. In the Nova Con file, number 14. Try a little harder, man. Yeah, here's a harder question. The Nova Con file. How does setting allow underscore same underscore net underscore traffic to true affect the system? Mark, question 14. Um, yeah, so this actually allows you to um, have traffic pass between two machines that are on different networks. Randy, number 14. It allows two VMs that are on the same host to talk to each other directly, and I think still, and I may be out of line here, that that even goes around the, the security group settings, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay. Boris, number 14. Um, it uh, actually allows all the VMs uh, that, that are up at the moment to uh, um, connect and talk to each other, even uh, if they are spread between different racks. All right, question number 14. If you think Boris gave the right answer, hold up number one. If you think Randy gave the right answer, hold up number three. And if you think Mark gave the right answer, hold up number two. All right, who's holding up number two? You're out. 
Next question. Good. And difficulty number it. one, you're also out. <laughs> All right. Wait a second. Who's? Wait a second. You got it wrong. What? So number three is the right answer. Number three is the right answer. I told yeah. number okay. three is right. Number three is okay. right. Okay. Question twenty-two. How many plugins? Did you can start drinking before we came in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. You, you Question got number me. twenty-two. You got me. How many plugins can Neutron support at the same time? Randy, how many plugins can Neutron support at the same time? As many as you load at runtime. Boris. Well, it uh, can support as many as you want, really. But uh, at this point, we've tried. If you try, if you do more than two, uh, it really screws it up. So, I mean, realistically, two is, is the maximum. Although stated is unlimited. Mark. Only one. There are workarounds where you can actually. Um, get around that limitation, but officially it only supports one. All right, if you think Boris is correct, hold up number one. If you think Randy is correct, hold up number uh, three and mark number two. Who said number two? If you said number two, you're correct. Everybody else is out. Who's got a two left? One, two, three, four. Excellent. All right, we're getting there. Can I have the question that kill ev kills everybody or something? Come yep. on. Like, Here. Or Question number five. Trick, and I'm trying to eliminate some people. You know? Question number five. What happens if a remote user uses an app in the remote username? Question number five. Randy, question number five. Uh, they get emails sent to them automatically on login. You're losing your touch, dude. <laughs> Boris, question number five. Um, well, you, you have to have an app, otherwise it just doesn't work. Mark? I mean, that's just like the naming convention, so. Yep. Yep. So the, the at, um, the left of it would be the username, and um, the right would be the domain. All right, how many people think Mark gave the right answer? And just how many people gave four. Randy the right answer? You know, we're not, uh, we're not cutting it here. Everybody's got Mark, that's the correct answer. Oh, this one, we're not doing this. Here's a good one, question number 17. What is the correct way to tear down a network which has a floating IP, a network interface, and a router? Randy. Is this a trick question? <laughs> you just go into the API and you basically tear down the network and everything else is, is tearn, torn down accordingly. Mark. So you need to remove the floating IP and clear the router and then remove the network. So the order does matter, contrary to what you may have heard from Mr. Bias. Boris. Sir uh, Bias. <laughs> Sir I, 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 no, actually, you have to clear the router first and then remove the floating IP. All right, how many people think Boris gave the right answer? Number one, number two, Mark, number three, Randy. Oh, I see you, you're number five. All right, no one has lost. Yeah, okay, I have no an idea, how about we do this? How about we do this? Now that there's so many people left and uh, we want to uh, give away more than just one, uh, we do a special round. All of us guess a number and we write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, um, no, actually, I've, I have a plan for this. Here's the question. Who's left? Shilla's left. Who else? One, two, three, four. Come up front. Come up the front row. You got four uh, <laughs> notes, right? Just <laughs> and the bell, and we can go. Right. Good job, guys. All right, now, Excellent. each of the panelists is going to pick a question we haven't asked yet. And if they believe you answered correctly, you win. If they believe you haven't answered it correctly, you're out. And you get to pick which panelist you want to get a question from. Wait a second. Oh, there's five of you. I thought you were out before, dude. <laughs> no? All right, come on in. How does this work again? So what we'll do is pick a panelist between you. Oh, oh, I have another way to do it. You guys will be one team. You guys will be the other team. I'm going to ask a question. What do I you, No, well, we're, no, we're going to split you into two teams. 
You're going to have to agree between you about who's bullshitting, and then you're going to see whether they're right or not. All right, let's go to question number 10. Does Watch. anybody have any idea Bear what we're doing? Bear with me. I'm, <laughs> I've been through this. Well, you guys weren't doing such a great job making up the answers. Uh, yeah, blame the panelists. Uh, no, they're going to make up the answers, but you're going to have to agree between you who's right and who's wrong. Uh, well, you can do that next. All right, question number 10. Boris, can you name a way to provide HA for Nova Compute? So I make up the answer? No, or you have to I give the answer. To or what? Give the are answer. we back to the original format? Huh? I'm so lost. No, no, no. What we're going to do is you guys are going to do it, and then they're going to have to decide between the three of them if they agree. Okay. And they're going to see if they're right or not. So the, the question is name a way to provide HA for Nova Compute. And you can't provide HA for Nova Compute. So there's no way. Mark? Actually, there are Chef and Puppet scripts that are useful for providing HA for Nova Compute. Randy? Uh, there's a plethora of options for uh, doing HA. You can do HA failover, you can do master elections, and you can also do the thing that we do, which uses ECMP and Anycast and provides a load balancing mechanism across N endpoints. Way to go. That's a my little, product a pitch. product <laughs> pitch in there. <laughs> All right. You three get to confirm. Cloudscaling.com. Cloudscaling you have to confirm and say, you know, you pick a winner, say who it is. Who's, who has the correct answer? Because yeah, if you're wrong, you're all three out. No, we'll tell them who's right. We are going to go with number three. Randy. Randy. All right. What do you guys think? Can I go to the same thing? Same You're right. So oh, what, what happens now? <laughs> 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 okay. Here's how we're going to do this. Let me, <laughs> All right. It's a, it's a no. bad question. We are, it's we're a gonna, bad I'm question. Gonna take, you know, I'm going to take Randy, this piece of paper. I'm going to take this piece of paper right here. And we're going to pass it around here. This one, this one behind us. Okay, Which hang on, hang on. Yeah. So no, I'm serious. It's gonna, it's gonna work good. So, yeah, just, just don't, 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 don't. Uh, here. Yeah. What's going on under the table? Give it back to me. Give it back to me. Has anybody ever wondered what happens at a foundation yeah. meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How does the foundation make decisions? Here we go. Okay. Now, now you guess who actually has the piece of paper, and you raise the card. No, no, this yeah. all, all of you, all, all, of the, all of the people a, in the front row it's a famous are runner game from Boris's childhood. So you guess. <laughs> okay, okay, look, everybody raise something, okay? Yay, we have, we a, have winner. a winner. A winner. Right there. So you have to show a piece of paper. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So now we move on to the next round where everybody gets to participate again. Oh, we don't, I don't know if we have How much time do we have sense? left? How much time do we have left? And how many of those boxes do you have? I've got two boxes left. <laughs> All right, let's try, let's try to get uh, these people. Yeah, right. I mean, these guys have made it this far. Let's get them into uh, the winning round. I don't need this. You know? What do I need a microphone for? You want to you ask them the next question? Let's, uh, let's see if they know the answer. And you guys can judge who gave the best answer. How's that? Save it again? Do you guys want me to interview people, them for people are leaving, dude. People are leaving. All right, well, they didn't win. <laughs> oh, it's only hiding. <laughs> All right. So um, do you guys want to take a stab at answering this question? We'll split you into two. You're one team, and you're the other team. All right? Sheila and when? You're one team. What's your name? Justin. Justin, and you are? Ramon. Ramon. OK. Confirm. Move over just a bit, Justin. Confirm, and then tell us what the correct answer is. But uh, you have one minute. One minute. Okay. And uh, while we're thinking, we're going to sing a song in Russian. I'm going to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Выходила над Катюша на высокий берег на крутой. All right, that's our one minute. Let's get the answer. When, when and Shilla, do you have an answer? What's one of the major advantages of having a subnet name? We are Oh, does that mean they default? It's going to ruin the game. 
Well, they have to, they have to give the correct answer. Yeah, let's get the correct answer. What's the correct answer? Well, for, some, uh, for naming a subnet, it's defined for uh, defining, um, how do you call it, for VLAN and trunking and that kind of stuff. You need to name for this. All right, number panelists, who's got the correct answer? <laughs> Is that the correct answer? I'm, I'm a little bit lost as to what I'm supposed to do right now. No, you're supposed to judge. Is that the, <laughs> is that the correct answer? Yeah, sing another by the second way, verse. I wrote, I wrote the correct answer right down here. Okay. <laughs> is that the correct answer? Yeah, can you, can you answer again? So. For Philan, uh, tagging and trunking, you need to have a name. You need to have Philan 27 or so for, the, for yourself. It sounds right to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong answer. What's the correct answer, Randy? Yeah, you actually have to give us a note three. A subnet name is used to bind a router to the, the network with the name, so it's an actual text tag. It's not a 802.1Q VLAN tag. All right, so we're going to try. The having a name is that it's got a name. Well, how about we just and give that was them also a bad question. <laughs> well, we got two left. We, obvious, you know, we need to do a little, little bit of elimination. Maybe we just give them the prize and uh, be done with it already. <laughs> huh? Yeah? Oh, I was doing on time. Can't stand the I, like, I like number 21. All right, we'll do question number 21. Guys, you ready? Randy's going to ask question number 21. What then, does Nova Conductor do? Oh, yeah. I was ask Good luck. <laughs> this one's close to my heart. Yes, it was released in Grizzly. All right. And nobody uses it. Hold on. Let's get some answers <laughs> for you. Give them all the commentary. The colorful commentary helps them think. Are we doing ready? Ready to answer the question? Yeah. You don't know the answer. Okay, let's do another. They don't know the answer, so forget Justin. it. Justin. Huh? Yeah, okay. Go. Do it. Give it a go. Okay. <laughs> All right, want to take a run at it, Shilla? It was, sounded good. You read about it, but you forgot. <laughs> you know, it's, it involves databases, so you should get this. The Nova Conductor is a piece of intermediary code that allows uh, the hypervisor nodes to, or other uh, agents to access the database without doing direct SQL calls. So it gives sort of an abstraction layer for talking to the database to inject a security model that is not currently working, otherwise everybody would use Nova Conductor. Yes. <laughs> so how about we, uh, simple question. If both of you answer, then we'll have uh, another round. But here's a question. What does PTL stand for? How much money did Marantis for? raise in their last round? Oh, that's a good question. Why don't you raise more than <laughs> yeah. Cloud Scale? Horse doesn't know. <laughs> I lost track, sorry. Oh. Uh, what does PTL stand for? Like, you're what? kidding me. Wow. You're ki <laughs> no, but. So, what do you think? Oh. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. All right, let's pick Unfortunately. Okay, where was the last design summit? Portland. You got it right. All right, so here's, here's what we're going to do. But um, you want to you do one more? Or we can, we can, well, we I mean, can they're, work they're all price. getting it right, so. Do it again with the, with the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you want to do the paper again? Let's do the paper. All right, yeah, let's right. do the paper. Do the paper. Come on, yeah. get the song going. Okay. This is a Russian solution, isn't it? <laughs> is this how voting works in Russia? Ooh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark, I have to touch question, your lap again. Question okay. number two. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Finally, I got a chance. <laughs> Question number two. You guys ready? You ready to vote? Oh, we're still voting? Yeah, we'll do right. one more. Okay, well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now you vote. All right. Question number two. What are the status and limitations of firewall as a service in the Havana release? And does it replace Neutron Security, the Neutron Security Group's implementation? All right. Randy? Okay, we're back to the normal format. Yep. Firewall as a service in Neutron now allows you to do extensive service chaining with uh, existing enterprise firewall solutions from folks like Checkpoint and Juniper NetScreen and Palo Alto Networks. 
Um, so it, it works beautifully. Mark? That, that last part gave you away. <laughs> uh, it's still experimental, I believe. And uh, if, you, if you deploy it, then it only works on, uh, on all the tenants at one time, which is uh, a, a problem. Boris? Um, it, it just doesn't work, that's all. <laughs> it's just there, but it doesn't work at all. There's not a single production deploy, produ experimental deployment of firewall as a service that has proven to work. All right, we're going to cut the suspense in just a minute. How many people think Boris is right? Hold up number one. Yep. Yeah. Number one? Number two? Number three? All right. This is the end. The correct answer is number two. You're out. And with that, we have three winners. I'm done. Phil wins. You win. Oh, and I had the paper. No, and I, I have one for you. Come to the Marantz booth and I'll give it to you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.